Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Marilyn Shannon, and this is the Breaking Free Show. And I'm so happy you're all here. As always, it's a pleasure to be in our spaces together and to uh, celebrate each other, to learn together, to grow together, to love with each other, and to experience the world and each other and our lives and all that stuff. So we have a wonderful show in store. You know, I always say that, but we do, and we have a beautiful story. So I really looking forward to getting to it. But before we do, I want to say hi to Amnon. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? I'm good, Amnon. How are you? I have fine. You're busy over there, huh? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> You're okay. Happy Father's Day. Thank you very much. You're very, very welcome. You had a good weekend? I did. Good. I did. I spent a lot of good time with my children, my grandchildren. And I'm a, an, and I've been, I, I think I told you all last week, right, that my daughter... And my son-in-law and my two grandchildren moved in for a couple of weeks between houses. And we have a very small condo and it, we have been such good roommates. I cannot, I go the, do the grocery shopping. My daughter's done the cooking and then my husband cleans up. How much better can you get than that? <laughs> and this morning, my grandson was so cute at four years old. He said, grandma, because they're moving out today. He said, grandma, are you going to come to our new house? And I said, yeah. He said, we have a lot of bedrooms. He says, and we have a guest bedroom. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it was wonderful. I think everyone should have an opportunity to live and spend time with their immediate family. And I mean parents, elderly parents, young parents, sisters, brothers, children, grandchildren. We all should experience that because it, is, it, is, it has revolutionized my relationship with my daughter my grandchildren and my son-in-law and even my other children. Because when you open up that love, what can you do? So anyway, I want to welcome all of you. I want to thank you all for being here. Remember, you can join us anytime you want in our chat. Just put your name under the video and ask questions, comment, whatever you like there. You can call in to 919-518-9773. And you can come in on Skype. And that's going to be voice, not video. So come in there, computers, and that's plural, then the number 2K voice. And happy Father's Day to all of you out there who are fathers, uncles, whomever, who have celebrated yesterday. You can say it to me, too, because I celebrated. All right. Here's my friend, Tracy. Hello. <laughs> Tracy Hi, Beerman. Hi. Hi. Thank you. We love each other. We do. We do. We do. <laughs> it's like a sister act. <laughs> and Tracy is here. And uh, like this is like almost like your first time of doing something like this, right? It is. It, it is. is. Yes. But she has shared bits and pieces of her story, and it's a story that timing is, you know how you hear timing is almost everything, and it just came up that this would be a really good show for today, and it is perfect, because the more we chat, the more we realize and it, it, that how the story has even evolved after Father's Day and all that stuff. So, and we have not talk much about this, because every time we start, I say, no, let's save this for <laughs> you, my friends out there. So should we go backwards a little bit? Sure. Like you want to, like, like yesterday. We could start with yesterday and then go back. Yes, I think that? that would be a really okay. good idea. Okay, great. So tell us about yesterday. So yesterday I spent uh, Father's Day. We took my father out for breakfast, um, me and my kids, my husband, um, and my mother. My parents have been divorced 35, 40 years, something like that. Um, and so we all had breakfast together and celebrated Father's Day. It was the first time that I have been with my father since I was a kid on Father's Day. So, and I didn't really, I didn't realize it at the time, but um, later in the day after I was, you know, um, back home, I realized, wow, that was the first time since I was a kid. So you didn't realize it? I didn't realize it. No, no, I didn't realize it. And, um, but it was beautiful. And it, it uh, yeah, it's, it's been an evolution <laughs> in our relationship. And my mother was there, too, which was also um, a, a complete, um, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And they, they're, they're doing well side by side. Um, uh, but it was really, it was a nice celebration. Yeah. So it's interesting because it's, it's, it's never too late. No. Mm -mm. To parent. It's never too late to you know, be a kid. It's, it's just never too late. It, maybe. I don't think. I don't think chance, it's ever it's, too late. It's never no. too late. Mm -hmm. Is it? 
to enjoy each other's company. So that must have been interesting. Was that the first time your parents have been together? Too? No, they've been together. They um, they they both came to um, they came to my sister's wedding, which was twenty years ago. Oh, um, that's a long time ago. And my wedding, okay. which was twenty years ago in April. Um, and, um, and then my dad just moved to Raleigh from upstate New York, from Syracuse, um, in September. So, and this is the first time I've lived in the same city with my father since I was 22, right after, out of college, you know, I moved away. Um, so they haven't really, they've had a lot of opportunities in the past, what, how many months is that? Nine months, um, to, uh, to be together and to, to be you know, they're, oh, they're Joe. sharing meals and things like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Y- yesterday I was just telling Tracy and I'm not, that we had a first mm-hmm. that my children are grown and they were bringing brunch to their dad uh, and with their sisters. They have two other sisters with their, that their father had. And their father invited my husband and I, you know, to come and celebrate Father's Day, Grandpa Day, you know, and I just didn't, I, I didn't, it didn't take me a second. To say yes. Yeah. Not a yeah. second when you have that opportunity. You just whatever. There's no yuck there. Yeah. You just go go past. So what brought your dad back here after all those years? So, well, he's always lived in um, in uh, upstate New York. Always. And so always. he's never lived here, really. He's not ever moved from New York. I, I think in the past... 50 years, at least 55 years, maybe he hadn't moved any further than three miles. <laughs> okay. So yeah. you haven't been together. Right? We haven't. No, we haven't not. We haven't lived in the same city since I left. So town. how long between now? And I mean, had you seen him through the years or you weren't even seeing him? So maybe this is a point to back up, okay. um, to back up to, uh, to when I was a child. And these are, it's so interesting when you are open and, um, and uh, accepting of whatever comes your way and new understandings of things and realizations. My memories of my, um, of my dad when we were kids was that he wasn't around. And, um, but that every two years we would go on a fantastic trip. We would go, he'd always plan a trip where we went to the beach part-time and we went to an amusement park time, part-time, um, every two years. And that was, uh, that was, those are my beautiful, amazing, just, those are my heart. But that was, that, those were the times when I got to be with my dad. Um, and then I didn't find out until recently that the reason I didn't, wasn't with my dad was because he was working. I, did, I guess I didn't really even realize that he wasn't, he really he's wasn't working. there. Right. Um, he worked the night shift. So, um, so I didn't have a relationship with dad. Um, they, my parents divorced when I was 17. And um, at that point, my sister and I were kind of, um, we were put in a situation where we had to get to know this man that we didn't know, except every two years when we went on vacations. Um, and it was, uh, really strange at, you know, when we were teenage girls and, um, and it, it kind of fell on my, in my, in my lap that this, I was responsible for getting us together. Um, and it was, uh, it was difficult. Um, when I turned and it didn't go well, <laughs> it was very uncomfortable. And I kind of, as soon as I went to college, I kind of, you Where know, was your mother in all of this? Was she? I mean, what was the role she played? So I really believe she was in kind of survival mode through most of my childhood. Um, They were married. They were married. But he just traveled for a living. He was, no, he was working, you know, not 15, 20 minutes away. But he just, he wasn't really a part of our, of our life, at least in my memory. You know, I don't remember, um, I don't remember what I longed for as an adult, let's say. Um, so when I was 22, I was just getting ready to move to Atlanta. I was leaving New York state and, um, moving to Atlanta to branch out and, and, uh, be an adult. And, um, um, 
I right before I left, I met this woman that my dad was with, and um, and uh, shortly after that, they married. And for the next twenty six years, um, she acted as if my sister and I did not exist. Um, we she had kids, she had grandchildren eventually, and her kids and her grandchildren were all. Um, yeah, okay, it was so, one of those interesting okay, so places. Let's, let's clear it up a little. Mm -hmm. So you're growing up, your dad's working, but he's not really living at the house. He's living there? But your memory... My memory is... Why I would you... Why do you... What was it about blocking it out? Do you think you blocked it out? Well, when recently he told me, you know, I said, oh, well, you don't remember when in, in middle school and high school. And he said, no, I don't. I wasn't there. So he so he he confirmed that okay it wasn't just my a coping mechanism or a um a trying to make sense of it it was that he it's wasn't there. It's interesting, you know. It's because you we we sh got to kind of ask these questions when mm -hmm. we have an opportunity because yeah. you can make up all kinds of things. Oh, and I right? did for we most do. of my life. Yeah, we yeah. make up all kinds of things when you know what do you know, right? And then you but you ask and you get clarified. And yeah, the answer is clarified. Yeah. So you go to so he marries this woman do you do you remember the divorce and what that I was? do I remember very clearly I can bring it all the emotion up in my in my body and in my mind um, you really loved him I mean you, I did and I just... longed for that um, you know and I didn't really have any examples of a father-daughter relationship when I was growing up really not at all um, but I really longed for that closeness of um, you know I, I needed him um, and I think it's, uh, I think it's somewhat an obvious, sometimes an obvious thing that we yearn for these relationships, yeah. for these ties, for these connections. And we don't know we're yearning. We don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. We don't honor them. Sometimes we just, you know, kind of push them under the rug or make believe they don't exist at all or whatever we do with them yeah. as opposed to acknowledging, acknowledging the fact of their existence and that why wouldn't they exist? Yeah, yeah. You know, why shouldn't they exist? And I, I, for many years, I told this story to myself that I wasn't worthy of mm -hmm. his love. That was, you know, um, I wasn't worthy of his love and I wasn't worthy uh, that that it, there was this abandonment that I these feelings of abandonment that um, that I mean I never really had him, <laughs> but there were these feelings of um, of uh, yeah that I was left that I was yeah well left it's behind. a natural thing to want to be connected to your parent yeah I mean there is that natural bond and I want to share with you all out there that I mean this is kind of like the first time Tracy has shared this kind of like openly in this way. Beth Vaughn is saying, did I hear Tracy say Binghamton? No, Syracuse. Syracuse. Yes. Syracuse. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hi, Kat. <laughs> uh, so, you know, this is the first time you're, you're sharing this. So yeah. this is a really, thank you. And this is a cool moment. And thank you Well, for the opportunity to share it. Well, how many of you out there have a similar story? Mm -hmm. or something that you shoved under the rug or you thought wasn't natural, but, you know, how can they not be? You know, how yeah. can least connections and love not be natural on in, in any way, shape, or form? Right. So you go to college, and your father marries this woman. When, so that yeah, was a when shock. I, when I moved to Atlanta, yeah, my so that father. that was even more of a shock. Yeah, and it was even more of a shock to find out that I uh, was told after they got married. I was, I, I called my dad and he said, oh yeah, just want to let you know that we got married. Oh, so again, more stories that I'm telling myself about, um, about that, I, you know, what is it with me? Why don't, why doesn't my dad want to be with me? And what is it about me that, that this woman does not um, want me to be a part of my father's life? And you know that because he told you that? Did that, he tell you she didn't want you apart, or how did you find that? No, out? that was that was my own story. Now, recently, when we've talked, he said she he told me that she was very very jealous of you and your sister. She really, yeah, and he flat out told me. I mean, this these are things you kind of know about people. 
<laughs> but she really did not. And there was no, I met her for this much time. I met her for an afternoon for a lunch. There was no, and it really, you know, as I, as I went through those 26 years, they, they were together for 26 years. As I went through those 26 years, I realized that, oh, it's not me. Of course, I had to keep reminding myself that over and over again. It's, it's her and her insecurity about that. I don't really know because I'm not her, but that my dad had a life before her or that we were going to try to take anything that her kids had. I, I really can't speak for her. I don't understand, but I, I but now I understand so it was all about right. fear. So you did get the feeling mm -hmm. that she didn't want you and he verified it. Recently. Now yeah. through while she was alive for 26 years, he would say, oh, I really, you know, you really should, you really should reach out to her. You really should. She's had a difficult life. <laughs> and I'm thinking... And so have I. Yeah. <laughs> really? How many times do we say make excuses for people like that? Yeah. But yeah. but but also it. Uh, but you. But I kind of know this too, and I know you do too. Mm -hmm. That you know, so it takes the bigger person sometimes, or the person whose heart is more open, right? Yeah. To reach out to somebody to and to keep reaching out sometimes, because eventually, in a lot of cases, they reach back. Right. Right. When you don't give them a chance to not love you, right? Yeah. Now I, I did not. Re I, I, I would send her little gifts and little thoughtful gifts. I think she so sent me some socks that. for Christmas one time. That was once. That was about. That was about the extent of it. But um, um, I did, and then I finally just threw up my hands, and I, it's. it's this energy, I'm, I'm not going to, get, right. it's not, the outcome that I want is not, um, yeah. And then he, and, and during this time, did he reach out to you or he was Not quiet? much. So she was, um, she was home all the time. So if I wanted to speak to my dad, it was always censored. So she would answer the phone and she would sit. I'm, I'm just, I could imagine her sitting right at the so kitchen just, table. I could never really talk to my dad. So, so my, that you felt that you knew that. Oh that yeah. Was happening. Yeah. Yeah. My sister and I would, um, every couple of years, if we bought him a ticket and made the arrangements, then we could get him to come to us. Um, not always willingly. A lot of times with lots of excuses of, um, I can't, I can't, I can't do that. Um, but yeah, re the, the reaching out, my dad didn't do a whole lot of reaching out. Mm -hmm. So this, how did this affect you? To lots of years in the therapist chair. <laughs> lots of talking. There, there was a period of time and it was right. Um, it was uh, maybe five years after, five years in when I realized it was, it was, because uh, I was 22. Yeah, I was you're still old young. enough to know though, but you're old enough to feel that loss. Yeah, I definitely you know? felt the loss and lots of time in the therapist chair. And, and there was a time at the beginning when I first started going into therapy that I just, I couldn't even say dad without bawling. And, you know, I came a long way in those, all of those years in the therapist chair. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can't, um, you can't deny those feelings and you're old <clears throat> enough to know what you're missing, not maybe what you're missing, but that you're missing somebody. Yeah. There's yeah. a loss. There's a yearning. There's a mourning. Yeah. I mean, when, a... there's a mourning. Well, and then the, it would kind of, when he, um, he married this woman, it sealed the deal on that's it. There's not any, there's no relationship here. There's not any, I can't get close to this man who's sitting where she's telling, she's talking to him through talking to me through him on the phone. I mean, that was every time. I called her my son. I th then there came a point where I just I'd call and then I would go maybe six months or a year and not. And he wouldn't call either. Mm, mm -mm, no, mm -mm. not then. Occasionally, if there was something going on with a family member or mm -hmm. something, but um, but yeah, it was it was uh, it was and and I my dad wanted to be loved. I know that you know. I mean and and. Um, and that's where he was 
that that was his uh, that was his way. Yeah, a lot of times we mistake love for other things, or other things we mistake for love. Right. Yeah, I don't know exactly what that was, but I well, you know control, I'm looking back. I mean, control. If you are yearning for love, I mean, we can't make this up. But if you're yearning for love, control. If somebody says, "I'm you know I'm here for you. Don't do that. I'm taking care of you. I'm watching over you." You know, I care about you. I don't want you to get hurt or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. it can feel like love to somebody, just like an ego can. Yeah. I mean, how many people are loved by their ego and their ego tells them, oh, don't do that because you're going to get hurt. Or, don't do that. Right. That feels like love, right? right? That feels like protection. Mm -hmm. That feels like, you know, I'm being, you know, I can't do that. You know, well, look at it in terms of a person. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a difference if a, if a person's telling you that. You get a lot of mixed messages. And I wonder, and I don't know, is it, is it, is it, is it men and women combined equally that take on that, 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 you know, does a man leave a ch child easier than a woman does if they're, in, if they have that love partner? Hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess it depends on the, uh, mm -hmm. it depends on the person Yeah. and the background and the, the experiences that they've had. Yeah. So a lot of years of therapy. Yeah, lots of years of therapy. Yeah. To find out what? <sighs> to keep digging back into that old stuff. And the therapy was great and I needed it. Um, but then there came a point where I just needed to go forward and stop going back into the all the pain, the painful stuff. And what can I do to go forward? So what did you do? <sighs> so I had my children. Um, she never met my children. She never met my sister's children. She didn't come to either one of our weddings, never came to visit either one of our homes in 26 years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, so I had my children, and you know, I have, a, I have a, uh, a wise old soul as my oldest son, and um, uh, he was exhibiting my, um, my feelings. I didn't even have to say anything, you know, I could, I, 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 I believe I'm a good mother, but he was feeling these um, these things within me, I believe. And he was acting out and he was having at three years old, self-loathing and pessimism and, and um, it was that negativity. You? That was you? That I, I, yeah, that's how I was feeling inside. So what did you, okay, so, so you saw you in him. I saw me in him. And that was, so I had done all of this forgiveness work and all of this, um, this, uh, this work and being in the, in the therapist chair and all of that over many of those years. Then I had my own children and I, and I, I saw this in him and that's when I decided, okay, I've got to do something different because what I'm doing is not working and I'm going to have to do this for my kids. Do you recall being like experiencing the self-loathing and how that manifested. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And what did, were you, I mean, I can't even imagine you doing that today and I can't imagine you being mean to somebody or I can't even imagine. I would not mean to, not mean to others, but mean to myself. And, and what did you do to be mean to yourself? Cause I, I can't even imagine you being mean to yourself. Yeah. I mean, just to making poor choices for okay. m many of those years and, um, and, uh, drinking and drugging and, uh, Men always seeking love and not, um, not, uh, not beautiful ways and, and, um, and, uh, just continually telling myself, not in those words, but that I'm not worthy of love or being happy, joyful. I think, you know, I, I, it's, it's also curious to me how that becomes the result of mm -hmm. that self-loathing. Yeah. You know, the men, the drugs, the drinking. I mean, it happens for many of us. I mean, I don't, I mean, God knows. I should switch chairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll interview you. <laughs> I mean, I have mine too. I mean, I'm like, when I look back sometimes in into my, what, I didn't even know. I, I'm, I'm sure, I don't even know if you call that self-loathing, mm -hmm. well, what you call it. But I often look back and, and think I would have hair on my chest today just thinking about the things that I did. Yes. Mm -hmm. To become somebody who said, maybe it's, maybe it's more about what we say no to. You know what I mean? That you get to a point right. where you say, where you are strong, where you, you push yourself so far into that stuff mm -hmm. that you come to a point where you say no, and then you can begin to say yes. 
That's that makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, because I was not I was saying and I had lots of excuses why I couldn't enjoy this or that or the other thing. And it was um, yeah, I, it was and it was all in the way I was thinking about myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was destructive in it. Um, and obviously I, I was seeing it in and I my son is he is this. He's an old soul. We say that he was born 40 and um, that he uh, ever since he was a little guy, he He's very, um, very highly sensitive, and uh, and um, and I didn't have to say anything. He was just getting it from me, and that was so painful. <laughs> that okay, I can't. You know, you you can run, but you can't hide. Like there you are. You're always there. And How my old son was he? he was three. Can you imagine? No, three year old being <laughs> able to pick up on your self loathing. Mm-hmm. It was, it was devastating. It was devastating. Yeah. How do you, yeah. You thought the thought of how, how can a three-year-old know this much about life or about himself? And it was, it was, he was picking it up. So what did you do? So I, I got really serious. Okay. What I've been doing to up to till now has not been working. So I, um, I really opened myself up on my knees, um, uh, and really started doing some major forgiveness work so more than I had. Then. You were married. I was married. Yeah. So the drugs, men, all that stuff. Was, that was before. That was before, before I got married. So yeah. you, you did well, all the, that. the, the, the drinking kind of continued, but the, but yeah, that was, that was before okay, I got married. So you, you do that. Then you get married, but you're still drinking, still drinking. And yeah. Ha- and then you start having children. Yeah. But you're still in the self-loathing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, um, I, I made a decision that I was, and I opened myself up. I prayed, um, show me the way I, I know, um, I know that, um, I know that there's a way. I don't know how I knew that there was a way I had to change my thinking about myself. And but if, you don't know the way. No, I didn't know the way. See, this is mm-hmm. very important. I want you all to hear this. Sometimes you have to say yes to something and you don't know the way you just yeah. know it's not the way you've been going. Right. Yes, it was not. It, that was not the way. And so I opened myself up to, um, OK, well, what I started doing was pulling my life apart, moving everybody's cheese, <laughs> upsetting everybody in my life. Um, uh, my husband, definitely. What do you uh, mean? My kids. Upsetting them. You know, saying this is not working for me. It's going to have to be different. And, and really putting my foot down, setting boundaries, because I didn't have boundaries before that. I was kind of a wide open, um, let things happen to me. And, you know, if I, I had to set some. Why are boundaries an indication of strength or of healing or of making the better choices? Why are boundaries? Wh- what is the expression of a boundary? So for me, I, I had to treat, te- teach people how to treat me. Um, I had to teach, uh, yeah, and kind of let go of the relationships and the things in my life that were not working. And but the so what I did was I pulled everything apart, and I didn't know how to put it back together again. And you know, once you pull it apart, you can't put it back in the box. <laughs> you can't. You know, there were times like, oh my gosh, I would just wish I hadn't done this. But it Can was you the give path. An example of what you're talking about. Like, what did you pull out that then you looked at and and said, now how do I put it back together? Or Put it back together or put it back together differently. So my marriage is one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the saying, this is not working for me. I know that we've been doing this for, for all of these years and this is not hear me loud and clear. This is not working for me. And, and the, it just created a lot more in, in our relationship. And I had just had all of these boxes open. It felt like, and, um, and didn't know how to put it all back together. And then, I met my coach. I met my coach, Susan, and um, she helped me. She was what I'd been praying for. Um, and she taught me to, instead of, I, I like to say that I, I lived life um, uh, Groundhog Day, you know, like every day. I just kept getting what I was getting because I, 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 didn't, I didn't reset. I didn't decide what I wanted. Um, you know, or that whack-a-mole, you know, the game at the fair where you're whacking the mole and, um, and it comes hops up over here and you whack it down, kind of living your life like that. The same thing over and over and over. The same thing over and over. And, and, and okay, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes and kind of knocking it down. And then I, she had me write a vision for what I wanted in my life rather than what I didn't want. And I wrote, 
I want to travel with my dad. So that was the extent of my vision with my dad. I want us to travel together as a family. That was my first my first vision. I want to travel with my dad. And nobody says you can't have a million and one boards even. Or right. visions. Yeah. And so, and at the time, there was no way and no how that that was going to happen. There was no way. But I knew that I needed that for me. I needed that for my kids. Um, I needed to, I needed my kids to, I, I needed it for me. I needed some kind of, I needed a relationship with my dad. That's well, what I wanted. Well, I, it, it sounds like you you wanted that acknowledgement yeah. that that was a possibility. It was. And that's very important. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we can, we can say we want to, you know, make a million dollars in six months, but maybe you'll make 800,000. But if you don't say a million, you're not going to make the 800,000. Right. 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 So you need something to ground you into. Yes. And before we go on, not, I just, again, 919-518-9773. Please feel free to call in or com- come in at computers, 2K voice on uh, Skype voice. It will not be video. And then you can certainly join us in our chat. Just put your name, nickname, whatever you like, and it's busy in there. So please put your name in there. Come in there. Share with us. And I'm not has something to say. I, I was just going to say, you said you had to teach people how to treat you. I did. Is it not more like you had to teach people how to not treat you anymore like that? Yes. Yes. Both ways. This is what I like. This is what I don't like. Um. Yeah, I had to do that with my husband and friends, and and I was one who would say yes to all these things that I didn't necessarily want to do. So I had to learn how to say no. I actually was in a um, in a group setting in a um, my husband and I were in marriage counseling, and still are. But I mean, I think everybody should be in marriage counseling. Um, but we were in a we were in a group setting, and um, the 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 uh, the therapist had me go around to eight people and say, and what, and stand them, stand right in front of them and say, no, no. And it was a weird, it was a weird thing for me to do, but I needed to do that. And I, that really stands out as like, cause he would say, what's the worst thing that could happen if you say no? Well, I don't know. <laughs> and so he had me do this exercise, but that's exactly it. I had to teach people how I wanted to be treated and how I didn't want to be treated, how I like to be, and, and about triggers, things about, you know, with my husband, um, about, okay, well, this brings me right back to being at the kitchen table with my parents, and this this is not, you don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. And when you say this or when this happens, this is where I go. So just learning how to. And you, it's a dance. It's a dance. It's not like you just say no, 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 or yes, 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 yes. It's a dance. Sometimes the no gives you permission for the yes. And then what's next is yes gives you permission for the no. It's about, it's just back and forth. And right. it's a step forward, a toe step forward, a little it is back. continually back. a process. Relationships are all that I have learned in the past, really, the past five, six years since I decided what I wanted. But learning, learning. Mm-hmm. about life inside of relationships. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think about that? Is, I mean, isn't that just the best thing ever? It is. And we learn things. That, the, I think the greatest thing is that, like what I mentioned earlier is that I've learned things about my childhood that I had made up in my mind. There were also things that I learned that I was correct about. But learning that. Um, that there are, you know, there are different sides, you know, why my dad chose to do this and why, you know, um, or marry this woman and cut me off. Um, but also kind of the truth that my mother would always tell me, your dad always loved you. He always went to the softball games. Yeah. She would tell me that continually in my mind. He didn't. Well, if he did, I had my own ideas of what love was. If he loved me, then he would reach out to me, that he would want to be with me. He would want to get to know his grandchildren. And he did. I know that now. He did what? Want to know me. He wanted to know his grandchildren. He's, he knows his grandchildren now. So in his heart of hearts. In his heart of hearts, he did. He's here now. He's here now. And he is, and in his, in his heart of hearts, he, it's there. Mm-hmm. He wanted to. And I think that's also 
why we want to hold forgiveness so big. Oh my gosh, the forgiveness. That was huge. It's and huge. I will tell you, if we had do we have just a few minutes and I want to tell you this this really We have we have more than a few minutes, don't okay. we? Okay. Okay, yes, good. Yes, yes, yes. So there was this um so I told you I I, I decided what I wanted. I want to um I want to have a relationship with my father. I want for all of us to go on a trip together. No way, no mm -hmm. how. I had asked, you know, and I had asked him, could we do this? Could we? And no, this at the is point when he was still married. We, this is when he. Yeah, this was five years ago, maybe. I'm still working with my coach at this point. I get a call and his wife passed away. I had never in my I had never imagined that she would go first. I never imagined, and not that I want, I, I mean, I never even, I never wished ill on her. I never, I, um, I, uh, I did wish that she wasn't in my dad's life, but I never, mm -hmm. it but just didn't, it wasn't in my, in my awareness that it could possibly be. So, and I will tell you, if I had not done all of that forgiveness work, there is no way I could have gotten on a plane and gone up to be there with him and clean up the mess that she had made in his life. I, there, it, it, that, is a, that is a talk for another time, but um, I wouldn't have been able to do that. And I, re, I did a lot of forgiveness around her. And I started, so um, I, we talked about this on Friday. Um, back, I was 22 when my dad married this woman. And, um, and, and you're how old now? 53. So it's a long time. It's a long time. It's a long time. It was in 1992, seemed like everything just blew up, and I was on my knees. I was ill. I wasn't getting better, and I was, I was physically, full. Physically, you mean? Physically, I had, um, I had chronic. I would kept getting sick over. I'd be on antibiotics, off antibiotics, I, and I was just to the point where I had to sit up in bed. I didn't have family around me. It was, um, I was, that, that was on my knees right there. Um, and so I, um, I picked up the book, A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. And she talks a lot about relationships. She talks a lot about forgiveness. Yes, she does. And that's where it, that's where it began with me. And, and something I didn't realize, so A Return to Love is, is based on um, the book, um, A Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't until I was working with my coach, Susan, that, um, that there's, a, there's, a, um, there's a, you know, it's, it's written in little pieces. Um, it says something about um, we are all asking, asking for or expressing love all the time. We are love. We're always asking for or expressing love. And, um, and no matter how unskillful it may seem, and that unskillful, oh my gosh, it was, it was like a, a, a light bulb went off. Okay, it's not dad that's... It was, it's, it's not it's, that he didn't want to love you. He was unskilled at how. Yes, he was unskilled and at how. Very and important. so was she. Very, very important. And uh, so I did a lot of, very you know, important. I did, didn't want to spend time with her, but I, but, well, but I did, I did a lot of forgiveness around her and around him. And I was able to be with him during that period of time. You know, it's interesting because when, because when I was talking to you on Friday mm -hmm. and I said, Let's call it a return to love. I had no idea that that was the book that Tracy's that's Tracy's was Tracy's Bible. This <laughs> wants to make me cry. <laughs> yeah, I had no I, no clue. It that was my up. that was my that was my Bible. That's what got me through the 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 really seriously on my knees. I don't know where else to go from here. She says in that book, you can love from a distance. Mm -hmm. If somebody's you can forgive and you can forgive from a distance and you can love from a distance. Right. You do not have to like be in somebody's company if you're, you know, but you can forgive. I mean, forgive is big. It is. Wayne Dyer, you know, Wayne yeah, Dyer. I do. He said he, he, he's died, but he had a very awful, awful um, relationship with his father. Yeah. And at his father's grave, he came up with forgiveness and he said, if you don't forgive, you might as well dig two graves. Yeah. Yours and the person you don't forgive. Right. So forgiveness is huge. And being unskilled, I mean, what do we know? I We're know. doing the best we can. But if we realize that, that we are 
stepping over ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's a book called Broken Open. Have you ever heard? Elizabeth Stevens. Elizabeth. Elizabeth um, Lesser? Lesser. Lesser. Yeah. She, mm -hmm. From uh, the Omega Institute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She says, we're all bozos on the bus. <laughs> yeah. We're all bozos on the bus. Right. We are learning and growing and, well, hope, you know, doing the best we can in this unskillful thing called love. Yeah. We think it's so easy. It should be easy. But what do we, how do, what do we know? How do, how do we know what to give? How do we know what to receive? You know, people say, well, I didn't want to bother you, so I didn't call you. And I'm like, how could you bother anybody when you're just reaching out and loving them? Right, right. You know, so don't hold back. Mm -hmm. Come into the love space. Come into whatever love can look like and just go from there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what else can you and do? And believe in love because that's what we are. That's who we are. We're love. So you have made like a, like your day yesterday. So you know, you went, we, we started with yesterday, right? With, with Tracy and we've yeah. gone around the universe, yep. right? We've gone from there all the way into the back. And now we're coming back again in a way mm -hmm. where you have believed in love. Mm -hmm. Some you held, I mean, and maybe that's what, why the self-loathing too, because you believe in love. You yeah. know, I don't know. I can't analyze it, but you know, you held on to the love with your father. You went the route of forgiveness and then here you are. You your parents are in the same, are the, same in the same table, city. breaking bread together. Yeah, and you're celebrating Father's Day. Yeah, it's when I so Dad called me July of last year, so it's been almost a year, and um, and he said, "Well, Trace, I think this is going to be my yeah, last." I start to cry. When I know. I just got this. Oof. He said, I think this is going to be my last winter in Syracuse. It was big of him. I want to come and be with you. You know, that's big. <sighs> that was almost that's a year a ago. That's a big thing for somebody to do. It he, was, he's 80. He, 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 he turned 80 in November. Yeah. So he really, like, he is showing his love. Yes. He always loved he you and now he's really showing right. it. Right. And now he's showing it. And um, so he, uh, we, and he's, and I said, well, dad, you know, of course, why do we need to wait? Why do you need to wait another another winter? Why don't we do it now? Why don't we get that house on the market before winter? You don't have to do another Syracuse winter. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so what is it? So I know that he's had some um, illnesses and mm -hmm. he hasn't been you know, up to his par, whatever yeah. that might look like. Par, that's funny because we're trying to get him on the golf course. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> that's well, goal. you've been there to help him. What's it been like yeah. for you to be helping to take care of him? So it's interesting. We haven't lived in the same city since, well, we haven't lived, lived in the same city in, in many, many, many years, what, 30 years, 30 plus years. Um, so we're learning each other. Yeah. And um, he, so he moved in, he moved in September. So we, the same week that, uh, that he moved, my father-in-law um, ended up getting very sick. He, so we had, we had, for uh, four parents who hadn't lived, they'd lived other places. In the past six years, we've had we had four parents move to Raleigh, and um, which is another. You know, as I started visioning more, I'm like, oh well, all of us are here. Why wouldn't we all be here? Um, so uh, we got we got dad moved here in September, got his house sold in January, which was uh, my sister lives in Denver, I live here. So it was a, it was a lot getting a house. He'd been living in it for 30 years, got the house sold in January. And I swear it was that week. We found out that he had to have a um, open heart surgery. So it was been, a, it's been a, it's been an interesting kind of roller coaster, not having him in my life. And then completely having in my him. life, completely everything. So I was the person, I was the caregiver. Um, so, uh, and that was, there were a lot of, woof, lots of feelings through all of that. But when it comes down to it, um, you know, I see him at my kitchen table and I just think, oh my gosh, this is crazy. But I decided that that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted in my life is to have my dad. It's, um, and at the end of his life too, which is really beautiful. So we're, we're in the process of, um, He's still in cardiac rehab right now. It went beautifully. 
um, and lots of feelings. And yeah, it was, it was really, it went, the surgery itself was easy. It's the recovery. That's yeah. the tough part. Um, but his, his, uh, so we, we got him driving. Now he's driving himself to, to rehab and, um, getting on the golf course. That's the next, that's the next, uh, the next step. And that will be in a couple of weeks. Does he share with you now how he's feeling about being here and he does. He he he, uh, he feels really awful about um, about everything. And and I've you know I know Dad. I know and you know. But let's go forward. You know you're here. You have an opportunity to know your grandchildren. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Now I was thinking about. The, the, I mean, not rehashing. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I was more curious about. You know what does he say about going forward? about being here and going forward and just, you know, sharing. Is he expressive? More breakfasts. Let's have more breakfasts. Is that what he He's says? not super, uh, super expressive. So, so is that, so you have to show him how to be expressive? Yeah. Yeah. And he, he is, especially he's learning. We're both learning. So what has this been like for your children? Like your son now that you, once you noticed mm -hmm. what was happening with your son and you shifted, and that was a pretty cool shift. Yeah. How do you see him now? And then you're, you have a daughter. Right. Now with your father. So give us a little update. So he, Grandpa Steve is a regular part of, it's not a, it's not a unusual, they didn't know him before. And they know him now. And he's a regular part of our life. And, um, you know, the kids will, every once in a while, we'll go over and take his little dog for a walk. And, um, and Katie will walk him. Matthew will walk or, or walk her. Um and my kids get to see me not only caring for my dad in the, during illness, but, you know, making plans for going forward to going up. We're, we're talking about um, going up to New York um, to see my, his family, um, so, my family. So had you been in touch with that side of your family? We years? had. Okay. I had. He, he cut off everybody so it wasn't just me so i was talking to my aunts um that's a big deal it was a big deal a big so deal. now everybody's reunited um and my uh my cousin and her husband they they've been now every time they go down to florida they, they six months in florida six months in new york and um now they're stopping and staying with dad and it's kind of a it's a it's a regular thing and it's a really beautiful there thing. and you've you've been like a in some cases, like a, a pawn in a good way. You help move the the energy, the love of, yeah. for everybody. Yeah. Would you say? Yeah. I, I, um, I mean, it's, it takes yes. a lot of work. It does. It continues to take a lot of work. And even yesterday he said something. I was like, ooh, bad. <laughs> you know, like that little triggers and, oh, okay. It's all good. No, nope, I'm not a kid anymore. So mom was right. My mom was right. That what? That he loved me. Yeah. She was right. And I, um, yeah, and she continued to. It's very important. It yeah. is very important. And she continued to tell me. But he, and even through that, the deepest, darkest times that he loves you. He just doesn't know how. And the unskillful part, oh my gosh, that was mind blowing. Oh, he's just unskillful. It's not, you know, separating the being from the behavior. So huge. I, you know what? I've been divorced for a long time and my children were young. They don't, I mean, I, this also makes me sad. Yeah. They have no recollection, hardly. Jamie, my oldest, who's going to be 38 a little bit, mm -hmm. but my other, my daughter, Dara, has very little uh, memory of her father and her mother being together. Yeah. But I have to tell you, I always you know, said nice things about him, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, and his family and my children had a good relationship with their grandparents. And I, my parent, when my parents would come here, even after we were divorced, my mother and my, my mother-in-law would get together. Mm -hmm. They'd have lunch. My father liked my father-in-law a lot. They would get together. We always kept it nice. Yeah. It's very important. What were you going to say? I was going to say, you know, same thing happened. I mean, I'm, I, I don't have any, this kind of, uh, situations happening in my life but yeah. driving and you're driving behind somebody who is just and you can't help but getting mad right mm -hmm. come on 
Right. And I started, every time this happens, I always say, it's probably somebody, a new driver, and they just don't know how to. It's, exactly. and right right. Away, it's a good point. On and that. it just yeah. goes, yeah. right? It's a good, it goes oh. away. Right, right. right. And that's it. You have to train yourself. It's not a automatic, right. you know, it's the, the autumn or it depends on how we were raised that the automatic is the, you know, yeah. the go. Arr! Right. Yeah. But you have to change so it. That unskill, unskillful. You're yeah. right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. when you look around, I mean, people and their role models, mentors, I mean, take a look. Yeah. Not everybody has <laughs> somebody who's shown them how to be in a relationship. Right. You know how to do that. What are you going to say? Right. I was going to say my my uh, my husband and I. He came from the loud family, and I came from the quiet family. Nobody ever spoke about anything. <laughs> he came from the family where there was a lot of um, it was very loud, and it was there was a lot of yelling, and so we came together not having any idea how to how do you do that? You know, how do you, and so we've had to, and we continue to have to learn each other and remember, oh yeah, that's right. And, and, um, and what is that? I can't remember what the, what the number, there's a certain, I don't know, is it like eight, you have to hear eight positives to make up for two negatives or something Maybe, like that. Know. It's, it's a lot. I remember when I was first dating my husband and we were going to get married and he said to me, I'm going to stretch you physically and you're going to stretch me emotionally. <laughs> And if that wasn't the truth, because he would have me like stringing from a rooftop and I will have him crying. Right, right. <laughs> I will have, what did you, how did you feel about that? <laughs> oh, I can totally see that. Yeah, you'd have so, to. <laughs> so believe it or not, we're at the time, right, this moment where I want you to tell everybody. So you have put all of this into like something good. I mean, you, you put this into a lot of good. Let me mm -hmm. correct myself. Yeah. You put this into a lot of good, but your work, work-wise. Tell everybody what you do. Yeah. Okay. So I am a, uh, I'm a life coach. I'm a life mastery consultant and I work with moms in particular, um, in particular uh, that comes from um, my realization that no matter what you say, no matter what you do, your kids are they there. It's almost like osmosis that they are getting from you, um, how you're being, they're learning how to navigate life through you. So it's so incredibly important um, to, uh, to show them how to do it, show them how to experience joy, show them how to have a relationship with their father or with, with another person, even when they're exhibiting unskillful behavior and all of the possibilities. So yeah, I get to, and how do they find you teach other, other people, um, www.onefootup.com. And one foot up means what? It means one foot up at a time. You don't go, we don't go from A to Z. We have to, you know, it's kind of that, I talk about the ever upward spiral of becoming, you know, and, and as you grow, and that's my number one core value is growth. I have to be growing. And, it, you know, you may do all this forgiveness and you, and then you're here. You may, this, this thing may come up again, but you see it from a different perspective. Right. So you're always moving up and up and up. Right. And that's one foot up. You're going, you know, you can't, you don't go from A to Z. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Very important. Okay, so now I'm going to have that, uh, my picture. Here's my new picture with my four books. Well, th yes, three are published. One is soon to be published. So we have in just one afternoon listening to the hearts of men, all about men sharing their emotional journey, awakening, the guidance that they have learned through their stuff that they can, are teaching. Then it's in just one afternoon listening to the hearts of twins and twins are a phenomenal role model for everything relationship, parenting, you know, mm -hmm. uh, sibling rivalry, conflict resolution, and then millennials, which is the newest one. And just one afternoon listening to hearts of millennials soon to be joined by in just one afternoon listening to the hearts of people impacted by opioid addiction. So my three books are up on Amazon and opioid addiction will be there soon, but it's really something. So final words, what would you say? It's summing this whole thing up. You know, I would have to say it's never too late. All things are possible. Um, and that we are love. That's what we are. We kind of get clouded you know over. when it's messy. Yeah. Even when it's messy, that's what we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's about <clears throat> it. And we all have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. to practice messy 
Yeah. On a regular basis. <laughs> every and day. I, every day. <laughs> and it's it, there's a difference uh, when you're practicing messy consciously than when you might be doing it unconsciously. Mm-hmm. Because when you when you are conscious about your messy love, it is it is more than okay to turn around and go, oops, yeah. you know, I shouldn't have said it that way. I could have said it this way. Maybe I could do it this way. Maybe I need to say I'm sorry. It's time for a new text. It's time for a new email. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a phone message. Maybe it's just a little gift. Maybe it's something that you can do to consciously shift whatever it is into a little bit more love. What were you going to say? I'm I'm going to read from the chat. Elizabeth is saying, she said a few things. She said uh, about you. She's a strong, amazing person. I have Mm -hmm. learned so much from her. And now she's saying, just wanted to say thank you to Tracy for sharing her experience and teaching others so much. I am so thankful for all I have learned. And thank you, Marilyn, for sharing such great stories. Mm, and thank you, Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. Great show. Yeah, I love these stories. You know, we often have, you know, we can have this author on, we can have this famous person on, we can have all these things on. But, you know, these stories are so important because this is where we all meet around the fireplace. Mm-hmm. And because I'm sure a lot of you out there can have, you know, sit back and go, yeah, that's my story too, or that's mm-hmm. a piece of my story or whatever. But the overall context of what we're talking about is everybody's thing. Yeah. Right? It's the the, the love that comes out messy. Don't stop. Mm-hmm. Let it keep on coming out messy, right? Right. Let right. it, right? Yeah. Keep coming out messy because like Tracy, yesterday you'll have a day where you're sitting around the table with your father and your mother for the first time mm-hmm. in yeah. years. That was, right? that was a, that was a realization. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you don't know what's happening along the way. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you turn around and go, wow, mm-hmm. look what I was just a part of. Look what just went on for me. Right. How amazing is that? Yeah. And, and we all have that opportunity and it could be with anybody. Mm-hmm. Fathers, mothers, children, friends, old friends. I have my very best friend from college. Um, and, and her story is going to be mm-hmm. in my opioid book. Mm-hmm. And I thought for years she didn't like me anymore. Mm-hmm. And I come to find out that it wasn't that. It was somebody in her life mm-hmm. that was pulling her away from me. And she, I was the, her maid of honor at her wedding. It's those realizations that, you know, we tell ourselves stories. We have to, the mind has to have stories, a the, the, the reason. To um, permission in, to pull away? Yeah. So here's an, so in closing, I would say, like with my friend, I kept feeling her all mm-hmm. of a sudden after like 10 years of not speaking, her, her name, her face, things that we did together growing up. I mean, we did a lot of things together from college on. Um, but I kept feeling her. Mm-hmm. And then one day I reached, found her, and it wasn't easy. I had to use Facebook to find her. And I found her and come to realize what she had been going through. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. Right. No idea. And now she's, you know, we're back in each other's lives again. Mm, That's beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. So, you know, I think the opportunity is there for each of us to reach out. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, you'll realize you remember somebody that you haven't been in touch with in a long time. Mm -hmm. Maybe this show today will, you know, inspire you to go do that. I hope so. Yeah, it would be really great. Yeah. And if that's the case, let us know and we'll have you on the show. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> well, it is a hallelujah moment. It is. These are hallelujah moments, mm-hmm. regardless of who they are. They're they're just. We teach our children different things. This is like the most important thing you can do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is love is love. So thank you all for being here, Tracy. Mm, I, love I love Tracy. You. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. I love, I love you. you. I love you too. I love all of you out there. Thanks for being here today and hearing Tracy's story. And And thank you. Thank you, Amna. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.
You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.